Hello and welcome to Tarzana's Treasures. Check out all the crap I just got edition. Now this is this, um, some of the stuff from the estate sale that I actually went back today and picked the last of the things that I um, got from Friday night, but then also the things from the San Leandro Citywide that was yesterday, Saturday, uh, May 16th. So, um, okay, oh yeah. <laughs> Real quick, so I went to the estate sale to, remember I said I'm going to offer her uh, an obscene amount for all the all the clothes and all the shoes, right? And so she goes, no, no, I can't do that. There's some really good pieces in there. And I was like, okay. So then she showed me, she goes, you see this blouse right here? It is made in Italy. It's 100% silk. It's Christian Dior. I want $20. And I said, I'm fully aware that it's 50 or 60 years old, and I'm fully aware it's made in Italy, but honey, with the pit stain and the wine stain on the lapel and the little mothball hole right here or whatever, it's not Christian Dior, it's Christian DeWarn. Okay, it's only worth about $4 on my end, and maybe I could sell it for six or seven. You know what I mean? So sometimes people gotta, you know, put the noses down. But anyway, I got some other cool stuff, like a bunch of little um, purses. So this little woman with like the suede ropes. Um, what I find, especially when I sell at Treasure Island, you have the two different, or I should say three different audiences. You have the audience that they don't give a crap. They just want something that's cool. Then you have the people that like, oh, it has to be natural and organic fabrics, you know, leather and cotton and wool. And then you have the people that, oh, I need synthetic because I'm vegan and I can't have leather. So it's like just, bitch, whatever. Okay, so I thought this was neat because it is natural fabrics, okay? Um, cotton and some type of straw and um, leather. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That was cute. It actually makes a little jingly sound. And this was a neat, uh, very 80s, you know, it has like the uh, drawstring hobo style, even comes with its own little barrette right here type thing. Yeah, so this is leather. Sorry, vegans. This one was kind of cute. Once again, very 80s. Um, I can't find a tag, but this is um, some type of, I don't know, crocodile, animal skin. Yeah, smells good. Not stinky. This was super ferocious. Can we see this? I know that the light's coming in. Black patent leather. I don't know. Well, well made in China. I guess it's not too fancy, but it's still in really good shape. So these were all just a couple of bucks. This, the little striping, very 80s, Melanie Griffith working girl, genuine leather, leather aspects, and it's got some type of snake duck deal on it, but that was in good shape. Oh yeah, it's got a little tag right here, aspects. Uh, and then this, this was really cute, even though it's like this funky earwax color, um, all leather, made in France, Longchamps, Paris, um, room for your little cards, just a little crossbody, little, little bag deal. Um, yeah, so that was cute. But then I came across these. I've always loved these. I remember my great grandma would have these a little cotton kind of like little makeup bags, but inside they actually have the little plastic tray that comes out. A lot of the times these get pretty gross or get cracked and people throw them out. But if you can find the little cloth cotton quilted that has the tray inside, that's pretty darn cute. So I was happy to find these. Ah. So I got this one and this little peach with the little white flower dot deals. And this kind of, I don't know, what, just very 80s Taos, New Mexico. I don't know, but it has the tray in that too. And then this one looks more like a, uh, what was that, like quilt, quilted tapestry, but it's just a cotton blend. Quilted has the little tray working designs. That's San Francisco. So, yeah. Pretty cute, yeah. These reminded me of my great grandma. I remember she would have these in her bathroom and they were kind of powdery and dusty or maybe she kept her sewing um, supplies in there and I'd look through it and she'd get like nervously laughing, sitting there going, ah, and then like her dentures are clicking around in her mouth. But so Grandma Helmet, these remind me of you. And she lived to be 102 years old, so how about that? Oh look, it's a matching set. Now here's probably just came some little makeup brushes in here. And there you go. I also want to remind all of you, anything that I show that I've got, I know of course I'm going to um, take it when I go sell at Treasure Island Flea Market, which is the last full weekend of each month. If I show anything in, in my videos and you like it and you're down, um, feel free to just send me a message or shoot me you know, a message or an email or text me and if you're local, um, I'd be happy to sell it to you. you know, as long as you come to my house, meet me at my house or the salon or something, I'd be happy to sell it to you and I could probably sell it to you for uh, about 25% cheaper than I would 
at Treasure Island because I don't have to worry about schlepping it and sticking it in the truck and um, all that type of stuff. Oh, and I want to give a quick little lesson on this because I actually got in trouble for uh, messaging someone and kind of letting them know about how the price tier works. She has these um, train cases, travel cases are just fabulous. They're, they're sturdy. They're just, they could hold a lot of stuff, but kind of lightweight. This is actually a really neat alternative to a purse, especially if you're going to, you know, be traveling and whatever. Anyway, so these um, Sam's Knight and Royal Travelers are the two top brands, I feel, that I look for. And there is a gal on one of the um, swap and sell sites trying to sell some no-name brand one that's in decent shape from the 1950s powder blue for like $30. And so I sent her a little message saying, hey, honey, let me help you out by letting you know about what price category your piece you're selling falls in and then I got in trouble by the administrator and she said no that's harassment so whatever I'm just going to show you so in case you know what you're looking for now you could see these anywhere you know at the um, thrift stores and, and garage sales and all that type of stuff now the number one thing let's see if I could do this in the wrong direction you know if they're clean inside if they're not all stank and rank and ripped can we see that so this one I mean, it just smells like, like the 70s. I can tell by the color. It's probably late 60s, early 70s. Um, but Royal Traveler, whatever, Denver. You know, all the pouches are intact. They're not ripped. The original lining is in good shape, though there is no mirror. So, you know, if it's clean and in great shape, cool, 15 bucks. You know what I mean? That, that's, a safe, that's a safe price. It's clean and in good shape. You know, I mean, hopefully at thrift stores are a little bit less. But then now if you have the tray... Most of them came with the tray. You could tell it came with the tray because it's got these little, the metal bar here um, that has the feet that holds the tray. Kind of like Caboodles 1.0, right? So if you had have the mirror but no tray, eh, it could be about 20, 25 bucks, depending on the condition and the smell. But then if you have the mirror and the tray, okay, now we're looking at probably more like um, $30 or $35, depending upon the condition. But like I was saying, the holy trifecta is the original mirror, the original tray, and the key. Oh, do we see that? The key. So the key is the key. And then once again here, the interior is nice. It's dry. All the um, pouches are intact. And then another point of interest is the... The little travel tag that no one's even written their name off of. So this, if it was, the, the exterior on this is a little scuffed up, but if this was in really great condition, it could probably, you know, command more like 50 bucks because everything about it is fantastic. So, okay, quick little lesson on those train cases. So sorry to burst your bubble, honey, but, you know, sometimes you got to let a hoe know. So we got purses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think that she saw this because she was checking for labels and fancy crap, right? So here we have just a nice, bright, canary yellow yarn with the tassels. I don't know what the hell can you put in here, like a beer, a soda can. See, it's just very round. This was before people had cell phones and crap. But then if you flip it on the inside, what does it say? Donna Karen, honey. Yes. All right. And we know I love my Christmas sweaters. Here we have this fantastic beaded zip up little chenille collar nutcracker. It's kind of heavy, so I dig that. And this fun little vest that it just says Donna, but you know, oh Donna, that can be so generic. But I'm sure it's some type of possible Angora blend, um, wool, little suede, little feather deal. So that was cute. So when people like that ethnic print, you know what I mean? So there we go. Got a little vest. Oh, and guys, this was actually got this at Thrift Town. A little apron. A couple of little pockets. Or just, I guess, one pocket. But I like that it's like, woo, woo, two-tier. <laughs> oh, and then these. Are you ready? Are you ready? I wasn't ready because um, the pictures didn't do them justice. So this cute, just little 80s with the gold chain, kind of black satiny with the white lining still in very good shape the asymmetrical flap there and then we get into this little purple deal looks like a shell yes really clean inside i don't think this was ever used the little uh, ruching i guess that's called but this one honey look at that it looks like a fan i'm your biggest fan yes pretty clean inside blue de sheen i don't know made in china maybe that's what it means Blue made in China. The little fan-shaped, little 80s clutch purse. Super cutesy poots. 
Oh, and then I found another one of these little um, old school compacts. It's got the little fake pearls on top, little mirror inside, and little powder poop it says Dorset Fifth Avenue. Woohoo! <laughs> Why do I always do that? Anyway, another little compact. And then getting into what I found in San Leandro. This cute little old lady sit. She didn't have much, but you know, sometimes you just gotta go in and look in the boxes and get to digging. But this old coffee can that I got for like $3, which you know, you go to antique shops and stuff like that, and they want like 15. Oh, and this one was cute. It's a little Ben Hur coffee. Um, I remember grandma or somebody had a bunch of this was popular. It's like jeweled beaded fruit. Anyway, these were two for a dollar. She had a big Christmas collection. Jeweled fruit. Oh, yes, and another little um, petite print compact. So this is kind of, you know, like almost like your needle point. I'm not going to eat this one. Oh, the mirror fell off. But once again, still has a little poof deal. So looks like I'm going to start collecting those. Got a couple of these old school razors. I'm not sure about this one. It has numbers on it, I guess adjustable. But this one right here has like the little atomic stars. So that's definitely 50s, 60s. I know my husband did a lot of research on the old um, razors and all that type of stuff. But I got both those for three bucks. So that was exciting. Oh, and then a um, Pinocchio uh, bottle opener. And she said that they bought this at their trip to wherever in Italy Pinocchio's from. So there you go, authentic Pinocchio bottle opener, it's like a dollar. I'm really getting into old books, I don't know if you saw my post where I got the 100 year old book. So here's just a couple more um, old books and you can tell because actually it's fabric on the outside. So here's just a Dickens Christmas book and just more Christmas, but neat old books, I like the way it smells. And then a real cool old um, teacup, little country, uh, whatever, it says made in England, bone china, Rosina, country, rose, teacup with the matching plate. How cute, see, there you go. I think I was at a store and I saw that a lot of those go for um, like 12 bucks a set. I don't know, I gotta research those a little more. And then the last bag, or at least I think the last bag of good stuff. Once again in San Leandro, I got this brand new purse whatever. I just got the beaded toucan and the, um, uh, what the hell is this? Par parrot. So just a brand new bag with the beads on it. I don't know. I thought that was pretty snazz. Well, I like flamingos. I know it's not a flamingo. Did you see in my video, my homegirl, Anna Lee. I don't quite know the story behind all of this stuff, but I remember grandma having these little scary faced creepy dolls that got like wire inside of them. And this one is in such good shape and she's dry. And I don't know if it was a kit. Nope. It's got a tag on it. Yep, Anna Lee. Oh, cool. Okay, 1971. Sweet. See, sometimes you just gotta flip it around and look for the tag. So I got one of hers. I got this just kind of small, solid wood tiki deal. That's a good weapon. Again, I'm always thinking things are weapons. Ooh, and then this. An old school perfume, atomizer, Eau de Toilette, Parfums International, New York, made in USA. Okay. I don't know, but it's, is there air coming out? Ooh, that does not smell like an old lady. But yeah, I thought that was kind of fierce with the tassel. The bulb is not cracked. That's a good sign. I know sometimes you go to the antique shops and all of this looks fine, but you go to squeeze it and the bulb is cracked. And this is not. So I don't know. I think this was like three bucks. Sometimes I know it's fun to barter just to get the better deal, but sometimes you just, you just suck it up when you know you got a good deal, right? And then, um, yeah. Someone said you look like a barn owl. Who? A little owl cookie jar. Pretty good shape. Owl cookie jar. No markings on it, but that was pretty cute. Got that for a buck. And uh, yeah, the grandma jewelry, but it's gonna be hard to show. So I know Gail wanted to see this, so I'll go ahead and make a little space and pan down and show you the grandma jewelry, Gail and Mookie. All right. So there we are. And this one I filmed in my little country kitchen. I don't think we've shown the kitchen since uh, I made the Paula Deen video. Do you remember? The, I don't know if any of you haven't seen the Paula Deen comedy parody video I made a couple of years ago after she got in trouble for saying the very colorful word. I made a little video here in the kitchen. I don't know. 
18 months, two years ago. But that's going to be on my YouTube page. So if you want to see that, just dig around. And I'm sure I've shared it or liked it or some shit. And that's on my page. Okay. I'm going to show you the jewelry. And then we'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay, Gail. Here you go. Let's see. Just got some plastic bracelets. Oh, I love this. with Very 80s with the paint spatter. You know, just cube plastic, nothing too great. Just very grandma junk jewelry. Oh my gosh, tearing up shop. There were some clip-ons. Let's see. Clip-ons. These are beaded. Those are nice. Those are probably some real retro. These funky little enamel glittery deals right there. Those are clip-ons. Clip-ons. So, yeah, nothing too exciting. I just like the brightness and the strange shapes. And I guess she was really into white. She was feeling that. But, uh, yeah, so... I think she just wanted about a dollar a piece and there's 23 items and I said here's 20 bucks and she said okay and then I don't mark it up too much you know I'm probably going to ask I don't know maybe three dollars for the set of earrings or something this little beads with this little shell deals I don't know I mean I, I try not to ask too much but you do have to understand you know what we go through and um, why we get to ask a little bit more. Ooh, I think I should make a video on that but here we are enjoy grandma junk jewelry.